Everybody here can speak a hidden language, and that's the language of movement. As an animal moves through the world, it leaves behind it a path, and that path can tell us patterns of movement, and from that we can tell behavior. And the really cool thing about this is that these patterns are scalable in every part of the natural world. Whether we're talking about insects, your pet dog, the mass migration of wildebeest in the Sahara, or even people, the rules that we move by are effectively the same. And I'm going to try and use these rules now and these patterns to explain to you the plight of the seabird and why I find shopping to be stressful. So the first question we've got to ask is why seabirds? Seabirds are top ocean predators, and because of that, they are representative of the health of the oceans. And what we actually find is that they're in trouble. We go into their colonies, and between the years, there's, there's sometimes less than there was the year before. So something's going on there, and we think part of the reason that that could be happening is that it's their interaction with fishing vessels and the fishing industry. And we can't follow seabirds directly because they go hundreds of kilometers offshore. But what we can do is we can track them with GPS. So we go into the colony, and we grab our bird. We put a little tag on it. And this will give us a GPS position, say, for every two minutes or so. And then we walk over to the side of the cliff, and we throw the bird over. <laughs> uh, it is a big cliff as well. It has to be. Uh, so hopefully, about a week later, the bird will come back. And hopefully, we can catch it again. And we get our tags back. And of course, we're left with a load of movement information then. And the question is, what do we do with that? That's a challenge. So to deal with that, I'm going to do what every good adult does. And I'm going to ignore my problems. I'm going to go shopping. And I want you to imagine my path through the shop as I go shopping. I'm in the supermarket, and I need bread. I'm going directly to the bread. And as I get to the bread, there's a, there's a lot. Wholemeal, white, brown, and I slow down. I take my time. I turn left, I turn right. And then I pick a bread, and I leave. And that's good shopping. But of course, it's not always like that. Sometimes you go into the supermarket, and you get distracted. Hey, that's pizza. So instead of bread, I'm having pizza tonight, and I get my pizza and I go home. And of course, that's junk food. Now, actually, we happen to see exactly the same patterns in seabirds, exactly the same. But of course, seabirds aren't eating pizza. They're eating the discards that are thrown overboard from fishing vessels. And what we find is, because these fish that the discards are coming from are from lower in the ocean, they're missing more of the proteins and the lipids and the fatty acid that these birds need. So they actually struggle to maintain their health and their fitness through time. So using the idea of where the birds are going, and we can see where the fishing vessels are going, we can kind of work together, and we can try and help inform best practice to help keep the seabirds healthy, and therefore keep the oceans healthy, which helps us, because we rely on the oceans so much. So by using movement, hopefully we can get across, or, or I can get across now, that it's a language. It's something that can tell us an awful lot about the natural world, about the animals inside it, and even the people inside it. And that's how, hopefully, we can keep seabirds on a healthy diet, and we can make shopping slightly less stressful for the rest of us. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Really good. Thanks, Ashley. That was, uh, that was really interesting. Um, a more generic question, can, can you tell me how you see science communication fitting into your career as you uh, move on? Yeah, so I think a lot of the things that we do in science, uh, it's very easy to get stuck in our own bubble. And it's, very, it's, it's, it's one thing to do science, but if you don't transmit science to the public, if you don't bring it out into the open forums, then there's really no progression. Part of science is moving things forward. It's not just describing things to ourselves and then sitting back in our bubble. So to me, communication is something that is, is not just a nice thing to do. It's something that we should all be aiming to do, striving to do, and is a responsibility for all of us.